Hi everyone, uh, thanks for uh, your time and the opportunity uh, to present uh, Tando to you today. Uh, so as Barbara mentioned, my name is Ophir Bar Levav. I'm based in, in Tel Aviv in Israel. And today we're going to cover some basics around the Tando uh, indoor uh, autonomous uh, drone systems. And I'm also hoping to be able to show you a, a live demo uh, of the system that I'm going to operate uh, from uh, my laptop today. So basically, what is Tando? So Tando is the first of its kind uh, fully autonomous indoor drone fleet that can carry out and automate various types of, uh, of inspection and security task missions in indoor spaces. Uh, we're currently focusing on four different types of indoor spaces uh, where Tando operates. Uh, these are office spaces, uh, warehouses, data centers, and retail areas, so malls or, or big, uh, big stores. In all these locations, we already today have uh, live installs uh, with customers that are leveraging Tando to automate some of their uh, security and inspection uh, tasks. Uh, to understand a bit more about the system or what do we mean when we say a fully autonomous indoor uh, drone solution, so the key pillars uh, in order to enable that operation is, is first uh, the ability to map and navigate in different types of indoor spaces, taking into account that when you go indoors, you don't really have uh, any GPS or any standard infrastructure for mapping or for, uh, or for navigation. So we've created a very unique uh, uh, solution. Uh, the Tando has based on the sensors that it has on board uh, alone. So we're not leveraging any uh, sensors or any other network communications that are in the environment. We're not counting on anything in the environment. Everything that Tando needs in order to orient itself and navigate within the environment are the sensors uh, uh, that are on the drone. So that's very critical you know, for autonomous operations. The second element is how we dock and charge Tando between missions. Uh, so we've developed a unique concept of a, a ceiling mounted docking and charging station. Uh, so that's a, a device that we call the tile that is based on the ceiling of the facility. And this is where Tando uh, docks and charges between missions. Uh, the, it's important to know that when Tando is docked, uh, you can still access and leverage its sensors. So like any other stationary or fixed, uh, or fixed camera, uh, today you can access the, the, the video. We have a 360 video capability as well as a thermal sensing uh, uh, capability. So and that's why in many cases where we operate Tando, for example, in office spaces, we call it a camera by day, guard by night, uh, because during the day it could act like any other CCTV camera and off office hours, it can then act like a, a patrol uh, a night guard that would go and, and, uh, and patrol the, the facility. The third element is really uh, what we call a future proof uh, element, you know, aspect of, of robotic solutions. And this is really goes to the fact that today we have a certain set of sensors. As I mentioned, we have video and, and thermal sensing, but in the future, you can think about additional sensors that we're planning to add uh, to this platform, anything from uh, uh, air quality sensing, gas sensing, humidity sensing and the like. And basically it's very easy to get your full facility covered with those sensors without needing to install them everywhere. You just, you know, add those sensors on the drone and then the full facility is covered now with these latest capabilities. You don't need to invest in infrastructure, cabling, wiring, uh, et cetera, in order to collect uh, the data. Or, and you can get sensors that you would otherwise not potentially would, uh, would invest in in specific locations. For example, a thermal sensor, you not have thermal sensors all across your facility, but with Tando, you basically have a thermal sensor you can take to any point in the facility and, and, and do measures. Last but not least is cost. So we've seen that a lot of the barriers in, in deploying robotics-based solutions in the past has been really uh, ROI and the ability to actually uh, offer a value that is uh, competitive. So we've built Tango from day one to scale. We're using only off-the-shelf, low-cost uh, sensors and materials. We did not invent anything on the, on the hardware side. It's really, and that really enables us to offer a very low cost solution because all the, all the challenges managed, you know, uh, on the software side. Uh, and, uh, and today we can ensure that whether we are compared versus a person doing the inspection role, or even if we are compared versus three or four cameras, 
that are installed in order to inspect a certain area, we are still more competitive in terms of, uh, in terms of cost. So how would the system look in a specific, uh, sorry, jumped one slide. How would the system look in a specific environment? Uh, we have three elements. We have the Tando drone itself that is mapping and patrolling uh, the space. Uh, and out of the box can already uh, detect various types of anomalies and, uh, and hazards. So examples are person detection uh, that you can get an alert on, specific object classifications and changes in the environment. So for example, uh, a door that was closed in a prior mission now is suddenly open. So this is type of changes that we can detect and alert on. Uh, thermal anomalies, so anything that goes above a specific thermal threshold or below a specific threshold could be uh, detected and alerted. And we are constantly working and increasing the amount of uh, AI-based detection that we offer uh, uh, with the system. But what I've mentioned is things that are already available uh, today. <clears throat> Excuse me. The second uh, element is obviously the docking and charging station. Uh, as, as we've mentioned, uh, one aspect that is also important to note is that Tando can actually hop between different uh, docking types. So if we need to cover a very large space that cannot be covered in one flight uh, because of time and battery limitations, you can actually install several uh, docking tiles. Tando can start uh, the patrol coming out of a certain docking tile, inspect a certain area, and then dock at another docking tile, get charged, and so on and so forth. Currently, uh, the battery lifetime is about 10 minutes of flight between charges, and that enables us to cover an area of around 2,000 square meters if we have to go back to the same uh, docking station. Uh, and then obviously you can very efficiently cover large spaces by using two, three, four, and potentially unlimited amount of uh, docking stations. All the operations of the solutions are managed by our Tando control bridge, which is really the brain uh, of the system. This is really where uh, you set the missions, you create a schedule, and then the system takes, takes over and starts operating, uh, operating the drones in the facility. Uh, we'll see in a minute in a demo, it's very simple to set, uh, to set the mission. Uh, and once you've set the mission and put it on schedule, for example, uh, let's say a general office scan, you could say, I want to, uh, the system to go on patrol every day from 8 p.m. at night to 6 a.m., let's say, in the, in the following morning, every hour. Once that's done, the system uh, it takes care of everything else. So you do not need to launch uh, Tando. You do not need to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you do not need to observe uh, uh, the system as it operates. It will go on a patrol, will collect data. If it finds anything uh, relevant, it was uh, defined as interesting, for example, a person or a thermal a threshold or something like that, you will get an alert. Otherwise, you will, co you will come back, charge, go out again, and so on and so forth, basically uh, unlimited. The other way to operate the system is if you want ad hoc to explore a specific area uh, in a facility or you want to react to a trigger from another system, let's say a forced door, an access control system, or a motion sensor, in a, an intrusion system, all you need to do is, is click on the location on the map that you want to uh, that you want to explore, and the system will actually send the drone uh, to that location. Uh, and it's important to note that everything is actually done automatically by the system, so we do not expect the operator to know where the drone is, uh, how to get, what is the route needed in order you know to get to that location. And we also do not offer employ, you know, uh, operators the ability to control or maneuver the drone while it is actually, uh, while it is actually opera uh, operating for, for a couple of reasons. First is safety. So uh, you know, flying drones in either spaces remotely from across the ocean is something that uh, is very complex. And so we do not want to uh, let people the ability uh, you know, to uh, potentially create uh, any damages. And, and the other is simplicity. Right. I mean, eventually, the, the people who are managing the system are the same people who are today sitting at uh, at your security operations center uh, and are watching CCTV systems or monitoring access control systems, and and we want to keep it simple. So, sending a tando to a mission to collect the data should be as simple as clicking on a camera in the cafeteria in order to see if anyone is in the in the cafeteria, uh, and we'll see in a demo in a minute uh, how uh, simple that is. Uh, and last but not least, our system can integrate into various 
security and, and, and safety system that you have on site so you so you can actually operate uh, uh, the system and get the relevant alerts in the system of your choosing so whether it's a video management system or an access control system or any other PSIM uh, solution that you're using uh, for your site so this was a short overview of the system what i would like to do now is actually to try and show you a live demo uh, of the system. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is to log uh, into our uh, control bridge application. And just put that aside and log out so you see it from the beginning. So this is our Thunder control bridge. It's a web-based uh, application. Uh, when I log in, I'm going to choose our our own site because we cannot go into a into a customer site uh, for obvious reasons and when you log sorry let me try to minimize that when sorry for that when you log into uh, the system basically you get our uh, our dashboard uh, depending on how many systems you have operating in the site, we have different zones. In this site, we have two zones, and you get some stats on the operations on that site, how many missions, uh, uh, you know, uh, happened over a certain period of time, uh, specific detections, uh, etc. Uh, let's log into one of the one of the areas, and let's look at the devices that we have in that uh, in that area. So. First of all, this is an area that is covered uh, by Tando. The specific map that you see here is actually created by the system. We do not rely on, uh, on customer maps or, or layouts. Uh, we could use them in order to enrich the map and provide context, but we cannot use them really for navigation. The drone needs something more accurate uh, and in different layers of data in order to properly navigate within the space. So this map was created by the system. And you can see we have several devices here. Uh, in this uh, area, uh, what we're going to look at is, is actually those two devices, which is a Tando drone and the demo uh, tile, which are located uh, here at the entrance. If we click on the Tando drone, we should be able to see uh, a live stream uh, from the drone itself. There we go. Uh, basically, you can see uh, some data on the drone, uh, the battery level, and what you're seeing now is actually a live stream from the drone's uh, front camera. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have a 360 uh, coverage. We have a front camera and a back camera. Each one of them is 180 degrees in a field of view. So just to orient you on, uh, on the map, uh, this the drone is based here, uh, and this wall that you see here that I'm marking is actually this black wall that you see in the video. And if I look at the back camera, this small office here that you see in the back is actually this uh, small office here. Uh, as I mentioned, we also have uh, a thermal sensor. So I can click on the thermal sensor overlay. And now you're getting a, a thermal overlay uh, on the video. Currently, everything is blue because there are no uh, specific anomalies. Uh, if we go to the plans tab, uh, this is really where you set uh, the missions or launch uh, ad hoc missions. Uh, one of, uh, as I mentioned, you can either choose any point on the map to launch an ad hoc mission. So, for example, I can, sorry, I can simply click on any point on the map, yeah. And I can tell the drone to inspect that location. I can tell it which direction I want to look at. And if I'll click OK, the system will uh, will launch a drone uh, to that location. So it's, it's that simple. As you see, I don't really need to know anything else apart from actually what area I want to inspect. Or I can choose each one of the predefined uh, patrols. In that space, I'll choose this specific one. You see the, the patrols that were predefined have specific points of interest that were defined by uh, by the user. Sorry. 
for that. Uh, let's launch uh, this patrol. The system asks me if I want to assign a specific drone or, or the system will auto assign it. Let's say I'll choose this drone so we can, we can follow it. And what I want to do in parallel is actually be able to show you uh, the tour also uh, from an external camera. Hope that's going to work. Yeah, so you can see the drone here. We have another camera installed in the office just behind the drone. And uh, I'm going to enlarge this so we'll not confuse you with too many video screens. And basically, uh, the system is now received. This is a camera that is external from the system, looking at the system as if you are in our office now. The drone is going through some basic safety checks, making sure that no one is uh, in the perimeter, that it's safe to, uh, to leave, that all the engines and everything is okay. And as you can see, once everything was confirmed, the drone is living on, uh, on the patrol. The first point that it's going to cover is at the end of the corridor. Uh, according to the plan, it should turn right and increase its height in this specific location. So you can see that it reached the point and it's going higher. We're we can currently operate uh, at the height of anywhere between 50 centimeters to seven meters, this current version of the, of the solution. Uh, obviously this is an office space, so we don't really have an, a lot of uh, freedom in terms of, uh, in terms of height in this space. The second area, uh, second inspection point was looking into uh, that room over there. Once it completed, that inspection, it is coming uh, towards the docking station to the third inspection point, which is just next to the docking station. Again, it's going to turn in order to view that specific location. And once that's complete, the drone will return to the docking area and start the docking sequence. So you'll see it will turn around. It has to be properly oriented in order to charge. And there we go. So that was a very, I'll say, short and simple example of a, of a tour. Uh, we could view uh, the tour life, what we could also see here is that we've already received uh, some anomalies. So we received the thermal anomaly. We can see it, the location of the thermal anomaly on the map. We can also see the thermal anomaly here on the, on the events. I can click it uh, and let's see what was the thermal anomaly uh, that was detected. So when I look at an anomaly, whether it's a thermal or a person or anything else, the system provides me with a 14 seconds video clip, seven seconds before the anomaly, seven seconds after. What you can see here is that uh, it's a thermal anomaly. So the system automatically uh, provides the thermal uh, overlay and uh, it identified this uh, heater that I've asked the team in the office uh, to leave on for the purposes of this demo. And you can see that it was identified at the 61 degrees centigrade and it was part of the uh, mission that i've launched you can click back to view uh, to view the mission you can see it's a uh, it's a mission that was launched uh, manually by myself uh, today it was two minutes uh, so it's pretty short uh, mission and you can see the related events uh, to that mission in this case we had a thermal anomaly and now we also received uh, some person events we can click on those uh, again, you can see the location <coughs> of the event on the map. And immediately you get the corresponding video of the event. In this case, it's one of our engineers there that is working in this area that uh, crossed path as the drone was making its way. You can obviously view the entire patrol. Uh, you can view it. Uh, either via the video uh, recorder, or you can actually uh, choose any point on the map. So you don't have to view the full patrol if you want to inspect a certain area. If you just want to see uh, this location, you, know, you just simply click on the map 
and the system will immediately get you uh, the view uh, from that uh, specific location. So here we had another uh, person identification. So that was a very uh, short uh, overview uh, of the system and a, a quick demo. I hope you find it useful. Get back to the presentation. Oh, sorry for that. Uh, just arrange that. So to summarize the benefits of, of Tando, basically uh, it's all around smart security. So the ability to automate the ongoing uh, security and safety inspection tasks, eliminate human error that is uh, many times related to these types of uh, operations, the routine, reliable type of uh, tasks that people are simply not good at. So we are very good at you know, making decisions. We're very good at maybe emergency situations, but the ability to actually operate the, the daily routines is usually something that people are not very, uh, not very good at. And obviously the ability to eliminate false alarms. So you have monitored uh, sites, maybe they are unmanned. Uh, today, false alarms create a lot of hassle. Uh, maybe you have to send someone to a site or a third party. Uh, so the ability to really use Tando as the ultimate first responder, as we say, in order to get first to the location, provide you with situational awareness of what's going on, and ideally uh, determine if the alarm is, 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 is false or, or true. So you'll be able to uh, take the right decision on what action is needed in terms of uh, what type of resources are needed to resolve uh, the issue. And as I mentioned, last but not least, is really uh, the cost saving versus any other uh, uh, solution. <coughs> Today, <clears throat> I'm sorry, this slide is, uh, is actually a bit out of date. We have more than uh, 10 systems by now installed with different customer sites. Uh, you can see some of, some of the logos that we have uh, installed when we have installations here in Israel, we have installations in the US. With several customers, we have installations in Canada, actually with G4S. And, uh, and we're covering different types of facilities from offices to data centers, warehouses. And actually now we also have our first retail uh, uh, mall installation. So our system is actually running over 500 autonomous missions uh, every week uh, in, in various sites. So we'll be happy to explore uh, potential collaboration uh, with yourselves and, and your customers. And uh, thank you. If there are any questions, I'll be happy to uh, take them now. Barbara? Things are clear. Uh, are there, if there are questions, you can add them in the chat or you can unmute yourself. If no questions, you can also send us the questions after the webinar and we will bring you in contact with Ophir. What is the commercial model? So I would not name any numbers because that is depending on, on, you know, on G4S uh, uh, commercial aspects, but the commercial model that we are, uh, sorry. sorry. So the commercial model that we're using is a combination of uh, one-time sales of the system and an annual license per drone. So there will be an initial cost to buy a drone and a docking tile and obviously depending on the site layout uh, you'll have a different amount of drones and tiles uh, depending on the needs and the use cases and then there will be an annual license uh, per drone with a minimum period of three years uh, uh, for uh, for a license and that includes from our end that also includes a full tier two three uh, support as well as a warranty uh, for the system if anything goes wrong. <clears throat> okay, and how about the maintenance needed? A good question. On maintenance, currently, uh, the only maintenance needed on the system, uh, since we operate indoors in, I would say, quite uh, a clean environment, so unlike other maybe systems that are operating outdoors and are suffering you know, from winds and weather, etc., the only maintenance that is needed is a replacement of the battery, uh, and that depends 
uh, on the intensity of use. So every battery obviously has a, a limited li you know, a life cycle in terms of the amount of charges. Uh, in some cases, for example, our, our most, I would say, intense uh, installation with a customer is a customer that is using the system every half hour, every night from 9 p.m. until uh, until 5 p.m. the next morning. And during the weekend, it's kind of 24-7. So it's doing, I think, over our uh, close to 200 missions of the week. Uh, so in that case, we have to replace the battery every about four months. Uh, in another customer that is only doing uh, two missions every night, uh, it can also last up to a year. So the amount of replacement really up to uh, up to the use case and the, how intense is the system. Okay, another question. How does the drone cope with closed fire doors, for example? Uh, you have to leave the doors open then? So I would say up front, the drone cannot open doors unless it's uh, automatic doors. So if, we, if there are doors that we can integrate to uh, via the access control system or uh, you know, RF, et cetera, we can, uh, we can open doors. Otherwise, we will not open doors. Uh, that means that if there is an area that you want to cover uh, that is really small and compartmentalized, it may not make sense uh, to use drones because you may need to multiply uh, many drones unless obviously you're willing to leave uh, those doors open. Uh, so the drone needs to have a space that is large enough uh, to make sense. <clears throat> I can say that, for example, we one of the sites that we cover today, we have five systems. Uh, it's five floors. So we don't go between floors because the, the, there are fire doors to go to the, to the stairways uh, area. Uh, but then it still makes a lot of sense for them. It's, we still uh, eventually cost, I would say, about uh, less than 40% of the other option, which, which was uh, deploying a night guard in this facility. And they're using five drones that are going in each one in each floor. OK. Uh, and is there a backup system when the power is cut off? So. The, the, the backup system in the sense that the, the, the drones are not going to fall from the sky or they're not going to are not going to uh, stay on the ground. So if a power is cut off and a drone is in midair uh, during a mission, uh, the drone will simply uh, identify the lights are off and it would uh, it would return to its uh, docking station and uh, charge or not charge, depending on if the docking station is connected to a, you know, to a UPS uh, switch. But otherwise, it would simply uh, wait until power is, is back on. Okay, another question. Uh, are the video feeds secure? Yes, yeah, so the video feeds... Today, we offer uh, a cloud-based solutions. So uh, the drones are transmitting uh, the video directly from the drone through the Wi-Fi, through the customer Wi-Fi system in encrypted manner uh, to the cloud. Uh, and we can also, uh, we can also uh, uh, stream the video for local storage uh, using Onviv. Uh, later this year, we will also offer uh, an on-prem uh, version uh, for customers that are not interested in, uh, in leveraging a cloud solution. Okay. Uh, do you provide integration with intruder intruder alert systems? Yes. So, I mean, moving forward, um, I mean, our main, I would say, uh, priority in terms of features is actually integration. So we started integration with VMS systems. We have a working integration with Milestone, for example, to operate the system. We have working integrations with some triggers like, uh, like uh, arming, disarming an intrusion system or being able to react to emotion sensors or things like that. So, and we'll, we are expanding the integration in the coming months to other VMS systems and access control systems as well. Can we integrate with any VMS or uh, have we got to use system platforms? No, so as I mentioned, we already have a milestone integration. Uh, until the end of this year, we'll have the big ones, you know, so the Genetex, uh, Vigilant, uh, FLIR, et cetera. I wouldn't say any VMS system because it depends how uh, how niche it is, but we will cover ourselves the I would say uh, the top VMS offerings. Okay. Does it have an automated return to home functionality? Uh, not sure. I 
understand exactly what that means. Uh, you could abort, you could abort, if I'm hoping I understand the question, you could abort the system and ask the drone to return home immediately if that's something uh, you want to do uh, remotely. I hope that was the, the intent. So he meant when the battery runs out, does it return home? Yeah, so a very important point. So if the drone does not, or the system, not the drone itself, the system does not think that the drone is able to carry out the mission, it will not launch a mission. So for example, if the drone is, is fully charged, but the person is trying to send it to a location that would be, that would take more power than the, than the battery of the drone, the mission would simply not launch. So that's a very important safety mechanism. Also, in case a drone is on a mission and for some reason it uh, encounters, uh, let's say, an obstacle and it takes it too long to bypass the obstacle, so it understands at some point that he will not have enough battery to complete the mission, he will automatically abort the mission, he will send a notification to the user or the operator that the mission was not uh, completed successfully because of a battery uh, or power consumption concern, and it will go back uh, to its docking station. Okay. Uh, can we integrate with face recording? We haven't tried yet to uh, integrate into, I'm guessing, for face uh, recognition. Uh, it's something we'll probably be looking at. It's not been a priority uh, so far from customers. Uh, so, uh, so I cannot really comment on how reliable that will be. We haven't, we haven't yet tried it. Can we use that mining sector to monitoring? Sorry, can we use that? Can we use uh, at the mining sector? So mining, again, it's not a currently an environment that we support. I would assume that the mining environment is a bit more challenging for various reasons. First, you know, in terms of the changing environment, it could be changing daily. The second will be environmental conditions, I'm guessing, in terms of potential temperatures or, uh, or dust or... So the drone is not, our system is not built for those types of environments. It's really more focused on, I would say, more uh, clean standard environments like, like a warehouse, like a data center, an office, etc. Okay, and the last question, what is GeForce's role offer in relation to this solution? So we've partnered with G4S uh, because eventually uh, we need strong partners in the markets we operate in order to uh, uh, multiply our kind of capability to sell, to market, to install and support uh, the system. Uh, so, uh, so we view the relationship with G4S as very strategic for us to be able to, to offer uh, you know, the system in a reliable manner to customers around Europe. Okay, and then another question, is the solution based on a commercial drone product or a custom-made drone by Indoor Robotics? So it's a, it's a custom-made uh, uh, drone, but as I mentioned, all the parts are off-the-shelf parts. So we are not drone builders and we, we don't have any intent, you know, intention to kind of uh, create a, a custom sensors or computing pieces. Uh, we do need, uh, you know, uh, the custom you know, design in order to be able to mainly support uh, the docking uh, element, which is something that we had to invent. So the docking system is fully customized because that's, uh, that's the only available uh, solution today. Uh, and we're also happy that we managed to patent it. So we have a patent on the ceiling uh, docking uh, concept, uh, but the drone itself is it's made uh, for us based on a custom design, but it's only using uh, off-the-shelf elements. We're not developing any compute or any sensors ourselves. Okay, another question. Does the drone have a speaker? That's a good question. We've been, uh, we've been I would say, debating that aspect uh, because of a request from some customers to be able to offer two-way audio on the drone. Eventually, for GDPR purposes, the current version that we have does not have a does not have a speaker or a, or a, a mic. We do have a speaker on the docking station, so we could communicate via the docking station. But the drone itself doesn't have one. We are looking at an option to offer a version with the mic and speaker for specific use cases that are not, uh, I would say, uh, uh, com you know, uh, compromising our GDPR compliance. Okay, no more questions at the moment, so I think we can 
and to the webinar. I would like to thank uh, Ophir for your presentation, uh, all of you for attending the webinar and for all the questions uh, you've asked. Uh, we will send you the, e the email uh, this afternoon with a recording. And if any questions, uh, don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks a lot, everyone, and have a nice day. Thank you very much for your time. Bye.